Buenas, buenos días aquí en Bogotá, Colombia, y buenas tardes en, en el Reino Unido. Muchas gracias por estar aquí con nosotros. Esta es una charla para estudiantes, para egresados. Queremos compartir con ustedes una iniciativa de Catmask, nuestra directora de la carrera, que muy amablemente, pues digamos, fue, fue intuitivamente muy, muy importante que Kat conectara para que hiciéramos este, este conversatorio, para que pues siguiéramos uh, eh, trazando lazos, conectando intereses y pues eh, estar aquí con nuestros invitados en, en el Reino Unido pues es una, gran, es una gran posibilidad para nuestros egresados y estudiantes. Muchísimas gracias Kat. Tenemos, eh, pues también estamos acompañados de nuestra actual directora, Olga Lucía Cruz. Muchas gracias, Olga Lucía. Es un saludo especial del decano para todos y dándole las gracias pues, a, a la universidad en, en, en Londres por estar acá, por conectarse, por darnos esta, por hacer este conversatorio. Y pues eh, dejo a Olga Lucía y a Kat para que pues, nos ayuden con la, con la charla. Me faltó presentarme, yo soy Johanna Rodríguez, trabajo en la Facultad de Artes en Relaciones con Egresados, y pues eh, la idea es organizar este tipo de encuentros con ustedes. Muchísimas gracias, Olga, Kat, gracias. Las dejo entonces, estoy pendiente. <risa> Muchas gracias, Johanna. Pues solo, solo agradecer y... Y nos alegra muchísimo que esta, este, este afecto que tenemos <ríe> cruce las fronteras, cruce el mar de esta manera y, y que podamos enterarnos de, de primera mano de nuestra actual directora, eh, Kat Busk, que es directora del departamento eh, de, 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 ay, perdóname, de la, del College of Arts en, en Wimbledon. Pues qué interesante poder escuchar todos los, todas las apuestas que están haciendo en este momento en términos de, de lo gradual, pero también de lo posgradual. Eh, hemos invitado estudiantes y egresados de la carrera de Artes Escénicas de la Facultad de Artes de la Universidad Javeriana, eh, que muy seguramente estarán muy interesados en establecer y en afirmar los lazos eh, entre las dos universidades a través de nuevas propuestas y, de, y, de, y en donde seguramente las voces de nuestros artistas eh, en conjunto van a poder hacer las transformaciones que esperamos a, a estas realidades. Entonces, Kat, una alegría verte, volver a sentirte cerca, más adelante seguramente que nos abrazaremos, estoy segura que eso va a ocurrir y, y bueno, ya quedamos entonces, eh, somos todo oídos, todo toda alegría para escuchar. Gracias. Um, just to translate there for my colleague Sofia and Mike, it was a, um, a very typical warm and heartfelt <laughs> introduction from my, my ex-colleagues in Colombia, just uh, thanking us for opening this space. Um, uh, creo que sería importante introducirles a, a mis compañeros, a, a Michael Wassel and Dr. Sofia New. Um, Maika es el, el tutora de admisiones eh, en actuación y performance y Sofía es la directora de carrera de las dos maestrías que vamos a presentar. Uh, I was just presenting you both, Maika and Sofía, and, and just before I pass over to Sofía, I'm just going to give a really brief really brief overview to um, University of Arts, and then we can go into a bit more detail about these two masters. Um, entonces, actualmente estoy uh, um, directora de departamento encargada del departamento de actuación y performance, y a la vez estoy uh, directora de, de una de las pregrados en actuación y performance, um, también como encargada. Eh, el colegio, el, no es un colegio, Wimbledon College of Arts es un, una, una parte de la Universidad de Artes de Londres, cuyo eh, este es como un, hasta cuenta es un, como un facultad 
dedicada a performance. Nuestro programa es actuación y performance y se encaja todo lo, lo que es sobre la actuación y el, pues la ejecución en vivo, sobre todo. Um, nos vamos a hacer la presentación en inglés. Escuchan bien, activan sus, sus oídos, que se recuerden los clases de inglés. Si hay preguntas, por favor, se pueden ponerlos en el chat y Billy se va navegando. Y luego abrimos micrófonos para que, para que se puedan preguntar cosas directamente a Sofía y yo los voy traduciendo. Mientras que, que Sofía hace la presentación, no voy a traducir todo directamente porque se va a alarga mucho, sino eh, escucha y, y, y quedamos muy pendientes. Pero nada, esos son dos maestrías que son increíbles y, y realmente pensé mucho en, en los egresados Meals, <laughs> for this um, so that was just a brief overview of, of Wimbledon College of Arts and where we sit within that and within the University of Arts London. Uh, I was just, Sophia was just explaining that um, you're going to do the presentation in English and then at the end we'll, we'll open the floor for questions and then by all means I can translate. So over to you Sophia and let me know if you need any help. With Mika, are you going to be um, triggering the slideshow for me? Because um, I can see this front page, just to double check. Uh, yes, uh, Sophia, just let me know when to change the slides and I will just change Good. it for you. That's perfect, thank you. So, um, great, thank you so much for this opportunity to talk to you all. Um, if I speak far too fast, then maybe Kat can wave at me and say, slow down. <laughs> That's the tendency of um, mother tongue speakers to just race ahead. So um, if we can go to the next slide, I hope we can start to show you, um, this is something that Kat's already said, so I don't think we need to go through that again. Um, these are the two names of the two MAs. Maybe we just pop back to that. Yeah, so there's two MAs uh, currently happening that are brand new at Wimbledon because we are now a, a performance center here at Wimbledon. And the first one is called MA Performance Politics and Social Justice. And the other one is called MA Performance and Theater Making. So there's a lot of similarities in the way in which these courses are structured. At some point, there's very small divergences. And at the moment, there's a very nice correlation between these two courses. And it's really very much embedded in making and practice. Um, just to give you some images, if you can go to the next one. Thanks, Mika. Um, that's an early piece of mine. So who am I? Why am I teaching on this course? I actually studied philosophy, literature and German to begin with at the University of Sussex. But whilst I was there, I got very interested in theatre making. I've been watching theatre as a teenager and getting involved in productions. And when I saw two words on a notice board towards the end of my uh, BA in philosophy, literature and German, I realised that that is something I hadn't dealt with. And that was feminist performance. And then I moved my life from Brighton to um, Bristol in order to undertake this MA in feminist performance. And this was really important to me uh, as I felt it was missing from my undergrad degree. And I really wanted to specialize in, into what this could be. And I became very interested when I left that course in, in solo performance and really looking at the figure of the solo female performer somewhere between cabaret, also between the wars in Europe, like who was this kind of image of the woman before actually she was asked quite often in the 50s in a more repressive family orientated idea of how the female figure can perform. Uh, the kind of liberation that happened between the wars was then quite quickly shut down after the war ended for many women. And this was a piece that I toured to festivals mostly in the UK um, throughout the year of 1999. Um, and then I started to get more involved with another experimental theatre company called Reckless Sleepers. So I was both touring with an experimental theatre company and doing my own solo work. If you can go to the next slide, please. So one of the things that I got interested in uh, was actually creating performance for a gallery space. And this was a performance that was beyond the, dur the, the duration of a standardized theater length show. So on the whole, there's this understanding that a theater piece is between an hour to an hour and a half. And I got very interested in how could I expand the time? And this is a piece that I'm actually performing for four hours. Um, it's Uh, performed in many ways upon my body it's called feeling poorly and that's to do with that state when you're not very well and you feel like you're in a sort of strange bubble so we made this structure which is actually hanging from the ceiling from blankets 
and the um, audience, it's only for one audience member at a time, the audience comes to the threshold, there's a kind of opening like a door, and there's actually a hole down the side, so you're kind of peeking or peering into this world, it's very atmospheric, it's only lit by one light bulb, and there is, in the background, you can just see it on that image, there is actually a cabinet where there's a soundtrack in there, and lots of medicinal bottles, and the important thing to know about this piece, it's very smelly. So there are lots of medicinal products that are used there, things like iodine and chamomile lotion and talc. And so it's a space that holds smell in many ways with these kind of blankets. And the audience members came for roughly 15 minutes. And when another audience member turned up, it was their cue to leave that space. And there was a kind of book uh, that they would write me messages at the end. Um, and there was this soundtrack that was on a loop so people knew to kind of come and go. And from that piece, I also made some um, publications uh, and toured it to not only around Britain, around different galleries, but also took it abroad to Europe. Next slide, please. Um, in uh, 1999, I met uh, Daniel Belasco Rogers. And from 2001 onwards, uh, we decided to call ourselves Plan B, and we made performances that were mostly happening in European festivals, and we've been working together for over 20 years. This is one example of um, one of the pieces that we've made. It's called The Last Hour, and we're using a chess clock, and you can see the camera is there, and it's directed to the audience. Um, we don't talk to each other. It's also a piece where we don't actually rehearse. So what is happening in that last hour is we're saying everything as if it's the last hour together. And this idea of the last hour is both the last hour with the time with the audience, maybe it's the last hour on earth that's left deliberately ambiguous. Um, but it's really this very um, confessional directed um, text to an audience to help them try to think about what might I say to someone that I've spent a huge portion of my life with if I had only one hour left with them like what is critical to say and we only perform this piece maximum once a year and it's only ever in black box theatre spaces so it's really set up to be very kind of classical and in some ways has a kind of formality to it as a confessional act. Next one, please. Yeah, so this is a little strange, and it might be a bit surprising to you, and hopefully it demonstrates the breadth of my understanding of what performance is, which is very wide, by the way. So although I consider this a performative act, um, actually what it looks like is quite abstract and ends up being shown quite often in a kind of gallery context um, in fine art or new media. So what started to happen was that Daniel and I moved our life from Berlin, from London to Berlin. And when we moved to Berlin, we got very interested in how we were learning a new place. And um, we used to do this very manually by scanning maps and drawing. And then we realized that a GPS device, a global positioning satellite system, uh, which is released to us through GLONASS and through the American military, and through um, Brazil has one, India has one. There's lots of different GPS systems by having the ability to receive from over four satellites, we can start to draw these traces of where we're going around the world. And this map that you're looking at here is actually 10 years worth of data. So it's a kind of layering up years after years of being in Berlin. And if you know this city, or if you've ever been to this city, you might be able to read it. You might be able to understand what some of those lines mean, where the train goes underneath the ground or where you appear because you're going to popping up from an underground station and spending an intense time in one area. Um, and the other places with disappearing underground, um, or we've simply never been there. And that's why it's a kind of white unknown space. So this is an ongoing everyday practice that I've had um, since 2007. So every time I leave a building, I turn on this device. And from this, I have a whole um, series of different works that I make. Sometimes it's about trying to re-remember what it was that I was doing, looking at animations. We've also been making carpets from this data. We've been making pieces made out of granite and perspex. So you can see that it started to generate, depending on the context, lots of different types of work. But fundamentally, my understanding is that I'm trying to do a drawing of my life. And that is um, then re-performed in gallery settings 
this kind of redrawing of, of where it is that I've been. Next one, please. So um, as I think Kat just mentioned, the School of Performance is um, actually in Wimbledon and we have many different courses that are happening here and it's very practical, it's very hands-on. So around us, we have other people who are makers and designers and thinkers, and they are really trying to find out through different material processes, be that with the body, which is fundamentally what, of course, performers have to work with, um, but also um, there are many people here who are making sets, some people here that are making objects, uh, there are people who are exploring new kinds of materialities, and we're starting to look at other ways of finding possibilities to collaborate. So actually what's happening right now with my students is that they're collaborating with the theatre and performance design MA students. Next slide, please. So there's just an overview of who are the people that are part of our team. And there you can see um, Kat, who you've been introduced to, and um, Professor Adrian Keir, who also helped set up and write many of these courses. And Jane Knoll, who's also the Dean of Performance here. Next slide, please. Just so you have a bit of an idea of what does it look like? I think some people don't realize that it actually has a rather charming, some would say suburban kind of feel. These are very typical um, English style houses. Nearby is a very nice big park. Um, so it's quite leafy, but we've also just undergone quite a lot of um, new development, very exciting new buildings, 12 million pounds to renovate this whole center. So there's a lot of facilities here. Um, I think it was one of the first places to have actually um, passive um, buildings. So it's also in terms of energy and in terms of environmental building regulations um, being revered as a, a good example of, of how to work with both an old and new building. You can see down the bottom on the right is the old building and this is what the new entrance looks like. Yeah, great, no, that's great, thank you. So this is the new entrance that you, the main uh, foyer, that you enter and soon actually it's all set up for show which was last year and we're setting up for the new show this is the kind of final graduating show mostly of the of the BAs because the MA finishes later in the year in kind of November December time but there's a there's a real buzz around at the moment setting up for showing that work and uh, this is to show you a little bit from the other side, so not from the street side. This is when you leave the refectory or the cafeteria, just so you can imagine in summer, there's a lot of people that can then sit outside. Uh, this is where people from different courses, for instance, that's right next to where one of the costume studios are. And there's really a fabulous costume course here and facilities for costume making. So this is one of the main places where people cross and can potentially meet each other. Next one, please. Yeah. This is an example of what we call our technically enhanced studio. You can see that green curtain there acting as a green screen to allow people to also work with new media in interesting and new ways. This is an example of a performance studio. So there's both been the attempt to make sure that you could use it as a kind of what we'd say is like a white cube or more as a, a black box so that you, you can see the projectors hung there in the middle of the space. But actually many of these studios have also been adapted so that we can hang theatre lights in them as well. Um, I don't think, I mean, Kat can confirm this, I don't think we have a sprung floor. We would, Kat and I would love to have a sprung floor, but certainly we've got um, uh, linoleum there, and this is one of the spaces. There's a couple of spaces that are better for working in terms of body movement and body dance-based practice. This is the studio that's uh, above the main studio that I'm using, that the BAs use a lot, but you can, this is quite good for movement work as well, isn't it, Kat? It's kind of great to be able to have movement going on in this space and benefits from this fantastic natural light from above. This is a 3D workshop, which is run by um, Ash, who I think has done a fabulous job in making sure that both some of the more traditional ways of working with materials and really cutting edge are both happening at the same time. There's really a resurgence happening here in a real interest in working with materials, with wood and metalwork. And at the same time, people would like to see how could I also explore that in perhaps 3D printing. So all of these possibilities can happen in these couple of spaces. At the back, you can go and do more metalwork to the sides so that you can use the machinery for woodwork. And just through that door that you can see in the image, that's where you can actually do the digital modeling and 3D printing. 
we have still a, a dirham. This is another example of both kind of new and old knowledge. I think it was a very smart move of Wimbledon to make sure that they held on to possibilities, for instance, for being able to dye 100 meters of cloth. Not every um, institution has thought about keeping some of these processes. Everyone thinks you won't need them in the future, but actually through experience, this is still something that people do and want to have as a resource. This is um, something that my students have also had a, a workshop to be able to play with virtual reality. How could performance start to play with how we're augmenting the kind of environments that we're working with? What as performance makers do we need to think about when we're inviting an audience to work with augmented or virtual reality? What are the different kind of designs and invitations we need to think about? And how um, can we have access to play basically? That's an important point. This is one of my current students um, who's studying uh, politics and social justice. Um, and I thought this was a great example of how you can bring together through performance something that's very passionate and immediate. So Teresa was interested in this in a small autobiographical solo in exploring the fact that her grandfather's house has already disappeared into the sea in Ghana. And so she decided to make a piece about how um, the global south is having to deal with the impact of the global north in terms of environmental catastrophe. And she had us seated very near her and through these ex hair extensions she had through this blue paint, the kind of water receding around us. And there was this very strong direct address to us as the audience to really consider our responsibility of what's happening elsewhere through the implications of our actions that is happening here and now. Okay, I think we can skip to the next one. Yes, yeah. so this is another example of a, I hope that's clear from this image. They, one of the recent collaborations, they decided to work with having eggs actually bound to the underneath of their feet to give them a very real and concrete uh, deliberate way of affecting their own physicality. So they were performing for most of the piece without trying to crush these eggs to really have a different kind of um, way of holding your body as they were performing and they were exploring this idea of hunger actually looking at hunger not only in relationship to food but as a, as a woman in terms of sexual desire and they were using this um, setup I think there's another image that we'll see later about how they're also projecting onto the body yeah <clears throat> so one of the things that politics and social justice actually combines is this idea of looking at activism and looking at kind of a cultural critique and asking ourselves, what is going on societally at the moment? What do we need to be taking care of? What do we need to be thinking with and through? And that kind of criticality at MA level is super important because it's not, even though we're very practice based, we need to also learn how to talk about the work that we want to do. And we need to also practice this academic writing in some way, and also to challenge what can academic writing be now? Because that is actually a very wide spectrum. And so we're looking at making sure that we have both those in, the way to talk about it and the way to make performance. Okay, so just as I, I was just giving you an idea about promoting performance within a kind of critical environment and to look at new methodologies that can be created through the kind of inquiries and research questions that the students are bringing to us. And so within that, or of course, we're looking at things like politics, um, aesthetics and philosophy. Next slide, please. Diversity is, is really important to us here at Wimbledon, and we're really aiming to have a diverse um, staff body, and we're working on also having a, a diverse um, student body. Um, and within that, of course, it's very interesting to have those different cultural contexts that people bring into the course and to really have that as part of the conversation, to learn not only from your own experience, but from also from your peers. Yeah, so what would I hope that people leave this course with? I would really hope that you do become very confident and articulate practitioner about what it is that you would like to do and where are the context and the kind of work that you would like to make and who are you making this work for? Theatre making, um, 
is a course which is happening at more or less the same time as the politics and the social justice, but many people are coming also already from a kind of performer background and are interested in deepening their practice and, and really having some of the facilities and the tools to try new things out within the context of a 15 month MA. Um, within this, there's also the possibility of not only doing small solos, but really looking at how do I actually collaborate with people around me? How could we have small ensemble works? How could we use the facilities that we have here at Wimbledon? Um, I haven't been able to show you an image of the main theatre that we have to work here, but actually there's quite a lot of facilities to actually explore what theatre making can be. We have things like 3D mapping onto the body with light. We have the possibility to work with sound, also with some effects. And so there's an understanding that you could really explore different ways of making, whilst at the same time thinking, what is performance making now? So not necessarily working with a given text, not, it's less about working with a play, for instance, more about producing and devising your own, your own work. So, one of the things that we're trying to also do with these new cohorts or peer groups is really look at non-hierarchical methodologies of working. And that means sometimes that some of the practitioners that we have come in and teach are also making and working with you alongside. So they're coming with a proposition, they're coming with a frame, and they're trying stuff out with you. Again, my biggest hope is that when people leave this course, they will clearly know what kind of maker they are, where their skill sets lie, and how they would like to use that in the future. And they have the language and the ability to articulate that to the best of their ability. Okay, here's a little bit of the structure of how the course has been broken down into these kind of units. And um, perhaps to say this first one that's called Creative and Critical Methods is lasting for 15 weeks. So that's why it has a, a lot of credit points. That's what's there in bracket is actually the credit points because all MAs have to have 180 credit points. So the Creative and Critical Methods is a lot of input. So that's a lot of inviting people to actually contribute to that first block. You're also unpacking what is your practice? How do you work? How would you be interested in working with other people? And this next unit two is slightly shorter, it's 10 weeks. And that's really looking at the cultural and political practice. So really thinking about the context of where are we making the work? Also using the example of practitioners. And now right at the moment, we're in unit three, which is this collaboration. Unfortunately, it's only a short, very intense collaboration for five weeks. Uh, that's the window of opportunity we have at the moment, but still quite a lot can happen in five weeks and we're working in a site specific way at the moment. So one group is going to the Prague Quadrennial and the other group are working in London at a community garden and the other group are working actually with um, boats on the Thames. So there's a lot of things going on between those 22 students in different places, both here and abroad. And finally, in unit four, which is also another 15 week, the final, which starts mid-July and goes through till the end of December, that's where the final project is being um, developed and will be shown to a public audience. And alongside that, there's a dissertation. If you really are very interested in, in writing for performance and writing with performance and academic writing, there is an option in the final unit four to actually have a bigger dissertation. The theatre making is very similar, as you see in unit two, it's much more on performance practice. Um, so the idea is that in unit two, looking more at the idea of the ensemble, but they're kind of similar structure because at the moment they're being run together. Ah, application advice. <laughs> so you will see that there's both a personal statement and a portfolio for both of them at the moment. And that's the materials that we're looking through. Uh, within that, there's a short video task, which gives me a little bit of a sense of who you are and how you work. Next slide, please. So this is just what um, UAL and Wimbledon specifically are looking for. Um, theater making as a mode of investigating, as a kind of way of creatively experimenting, be able to communicate ideas through performance and in your writing and your ability to be part of an ensemble and to be able to collaborate with others and to show that you can work within a group, very important. 
to also look at how can we have a situation of creative problem solving or sustained critical thinking and look at performance as a mode of answering some of those questions. Um, finally, the evidence to be able to conduct uh, research through critical and creative uh, methodologies and to really think about what is the inquiry that I have for this time during the MA. Next slide, please. Is that the final one? Mm. Ah, yes. <laughs> A little bit more about the personal statement. Was that? Yeah. Yeah, there we are. So it's not very long, 500 words. Um, so you really give us motivation, uh, why you would like to study here, uh, what is your creative practice to date, um, how you think that would help you in the future to study this MA, um, to perhaps highlight the academic qualifications you have already, and uh, just to say there are cases that people come to an MA who haven't done a BA. It doesn't happen very often, but occasionally it does, especially if someone's had a lot of practice in the field, and then we have to work out how to make that equivalent work, um, but to really talk about your relevant experience. Next slide, please. And what's put into the portfolio? This is an opportunity to really sort of share images and embed video. Um, if you go to the next slide, Nika. Yeah. So images and video quite often quite visual. Um, it's also if you're somebody that works with diagramming, that's also a way to share with us how you work. Let's have a little look into notebooks, sketches. I think all of that gives us an idea of what you're like as a maker. But um, more than anything, just to give us an idea of also what you're like as a person, what, it, what are the ways in which you work? Yeah, so this is, as I've talked about, it's very visual. Um, and because the UAL is really more of a kind of art school ethos, that's, it's really important to have kind of images or documentation of your work in some way um, and show how you've worked with different materials and different topics. Uh, and to really give us an idea of what you'd like to research. So this is some of the things that I think I've already highlighted, just to reiterate, it's good to have some photos and some video clips of the work that you've made, but also it's really great if you tell me what your role is within those works, that really helps to indicate what that is. Perhaps you've had some critical reviews of things that you've written about other performances to give me an idea of the kind of performances and performance makers that you're interested in. And to give some examples, sketchbooks, notebooks, journals, and how you've been working collaboratively. And you can submit some written work, but you don't have to. So this is the opportunity for you to really show us who and how you work. Um, and what are your processes and what have they been up until now and why you are particularly passionate for performance making. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is quite a nice statement and uh, very typical of UAL. Don't assume what we want to see. Show us what you'd like us to see. Show us your point of view um, and to really give us a sense of what you're like as a person. Yeah, there's more help online through the UAL website mm. to give you an idea about how to go about constructing a portfolio. So there's the link there. And I think we're, ah, yes, the interview. So the interviews are happening in, uh, online. And that's important to know. Maybe we can go to the next slide. Okay. Yeah, and that's where um, usually me, uh, if I've invited you to an interview, I have a bit of an opportunity to ask you some questions to get to know a bit about how you've been working in the past, how you'd like to work in the future, what this opportunity of doing this MA would be for you and how you'd like to use that opportunity in the future. So that's more or less it, I think. Thank you so much, Sophia. Um, just to sort of hang on the back there, a lot of what we require at UAL for the portfolio is actually interesting because it's um it's like their their dissertation for their BA they have to submit a portfolio with a personal statement and with evidence of of research thinking and so actually they have all of those they just need to assemble it in maybe a, a different way um entonces está justo diciendo que pues a, a agradecer a Sofía para como 
presentarnos las dos maestrías. Justo, justo como pensando en, en la parte de admisiones para las maestrías, es muy, es muy interesante a ver que lo que pedimos en la carrera de artes escénicas eh, en el portafolio es exactamente lo que piden a nivel de maestría para admisiones. No tanto como una página de web, sino como un... un eh, ah, sketchbook como una con, es como la información que tienen en sus portafolios para de, de presentarlo que se hace en una manera eh, no tan tan eh, ah, como no tanto como página web pero ahí lo tienen todo ahí está listo es simplemente como or, organizarlo interesante que que la preparación de la, de la carrera de artes escénicas eh, les han les ha, créeme créeme de corazón les han hecho Perfecto para aplicar maestrías, la verdad. Um, creo que lo que quiero subrayar de lo que Sofía estaba diciendo, particularmente pensando en los egresados de Colombia, en el contexto de Colombia, en el contexto de, de un país um, cuyo ha vivido más de 50 años en conflicto, eh, una de las dos maestrías tiene que ver con, con performance, política y justicia social, o sea, es, es como hacer a través del arte, hacer que nuestro, nuestro quehacer, nuestra ejecución tiene sentido. Y ahí sí, yo, yo pienso mucho en, en pues, la comunidad colombiana, en lo que hacemos muchas veces, porque eh, es muy diferente, es muy diferente en el contexto británico, y creo que ustedes como egresados tienen mucho que, que ofrecer a un programa como este. La otra maestría que es Theatre Making, estoy tra tratando de buscar una traducción acertada, pero no lo hay, es como haciendo teatro. Pero creo que hay algo en, en el verbo hacer que es muy importante para el contexto de esta universidad, porque es una, es una escuela de arte primero y es una universidad. Entonces todo lo que hacemos es pensar en el hacer, es como pensando mientras que, que hacemos y hacemos mientras que pensamos. Y es el hacer, es el verbo to make, the making, que es muy importante. Y eso, eso está también muy, muy en las raíces de la carrera de artes escénicas. Es, es, es esa práctica, es esa, eh, esa investigación a través de la práctica. Ahí sí, como que veo que los egresados eh, en particular tienen mucho para ofrecer. Bueno, yo creo que eso sí fue un, un, un bombardeo de información eh, en inglés, pero si yo quisiera como abrir el piso para preguntas, eh, ¿qué quieren preguntas, Sofía? Eh, ella es muy amable, no les van a, a morder la mano. She's very, very friendly and she's definitely not going to bite, bite you. So even if they are very simple questions, please, eh, haznos sus preguntas, aprovecha, tenemos por ahí unos, tengo niñera por más 10 minutos. <laughs> I have about 10 minutes more. Babysitting. Questions in the chat, maybe. I saw some things popping up. Eso creo que fue yo. I think that was me <laughs> writing some notes. Ah. Uh, so we have a we have a question from Dan. Hola, Daniel. <laughs> from Daniel uh, Ortiz, um, who is a graduate of the performing arts course. Ah, uh, this is a brilliant question, Sophia. Are there any grants or scholarships? Yes, one of my students got the UAL scholarship grant, which is a very generous one. Um, but there's only four of those ones, the international scholarships. Um, I'm not so sure, maybe you know, Kat, if there's more specific ones to Wimbledon, but I know there's, the, there's a very generous UAL wide one, uh, which you can imagine the competition is fierce for that because it's only four and there's many thousands of students. But that is generous enough to be able to pay the fees and live in London, which is not easy. So, hay cuatro becas para estudiantes internacionales eh, desde la universidad. Um, está, obviamente está muy competitiva, pero creo que siendo estudiantes del, del Global Sur, por decirlo así, eso no sé si, si está bien traducido, eh, están en una buena posición para, primero con eso, y segundo, pues con toda la cancha que ustedes tienen. Así que yo diría, como, hazlo. Uno nunca se sabe, porque eh, 
Teresa que vimos en, en las fotos, ella es recipiente de una de estas becas y es una beca bastante generosa, es suficiente para poder vivir y no tener que trabajar realmente hasta tal punto, porque sabemos que el Reino Unido es, um, no es lo más barato. <risa> eh, eh, tenemos también algunas becas eh, ya, ya cuando tienes eh, la oferta, es decir, que te dan cupo, eh, abren a veces algunas becas al nivel del, del, del um, de lo que dicen en, en inglés es college, pero eso no es colegio al nivel como del, de la facultad, mm -hmm. pero no son tan generosos como, como la, las internacionales. There's about 700 students at the moment here. Ya, yeah, tenemos 700 estudiantes en, en la facultad mm -hmm. y hay no, otra programa. No, 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 all ours, not all our students, no. <laughs> Much smaller than, than, than in Havariana. <laughs> ¿Qué otras preguntas hay? ¿Qué más quisieran saber? Bueno, el silencio dice mucho. Yo tengo una inquietud, pero sí, no sé si es, es demasiado. Hoy pensando en incluso yo acceder eh, a un tipo de maestría como este y me interesa, por supuesto, mucho la que tiene que ver con, con los asuntos eh, políticos de performance. Eh, ¿Cuánto dura? ¿Y cuánto dura exactamente? que pues no, no lo logró entender. Y por otro lado, si sí hay posibilidad de, de estar yendo y viniendo en el sentido de no una total presencialidad, eh, sino trabajos que se pueden presentar a distancia o no para facilitar eh, en el evento en el que eh, personas ya estemos trabajando, ya estemos laborando y, y podamos hacer como eh, sí. no, ese, ese tipo de soluciones económicas y, y familiares. So Olga is just asking about how long how long the mice, the masters are, uh, which is uh, I believe 15 months, right, Sophia? Son 15 meses en total. Mm -hmm. Es como un año y medio. Um, y uh, uh, Olga also was just asking if it's um, like how face to face is it? How much does you need to be there? Can you do it like half and half? Um, And to respond to that, if that's okay, Sophia, um, I, I can start. I can start in in Wimbledon porque es presencial. Um, los módulos que se llaman unidades se conforman en en como los semestres del, del Reino Unido. Entonces normalmente el el año académico es septiembre hasta julio, con vacaciones largos en julio agosto es nuestro, como nuestras vacaciones largos y nuestras vacaciones cortos son de Navidad. Diciendo eso, son, son suficientes para poder volver y, y regresar. Um, no, pero no son como en la Javariana, que esas son las vacaciones grandes, son en, 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 en diciembre en, y enero. Um, y a propósito, eh, acá también están haciendo doctorados, que, que podría ser también una, una opción para algo, alguien que, que quieren como ir más, más profundo en performance and, and social stuff. Uh, PhDs is also uh, maybe a possibility which is actually new to the college. Son nuevos este año. Es primera tanda que van a ingresar. But just to say that we have an understanding that some people have to work. So I'm working on a model of having like three days presence. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. And it's not very much online. It's really about working in the studio. So I know there are other courses that have the online option, but we really realize that we need presence. Mm. Entonces, Sofía estaba diciendo que, que está trabajando como para el próximo año para hacer un, un, un horario cuyos no son todos los días en el estudio, entendiendo que casi todos los estudiantes trabajan o de medio tiempo o de tiempo completo tal cual en, en los pregrados, um, es así. Um, uh, 
pero el trabajo casi no hay nada que es, que es virtual, es casi todo um, presencial. Very occasionally someone presents something online or very occasionally it's a tutorial online, but on the whole it's about being present in the studio. De, de vez en cuando um, eh, digital, eso no es la palabra, pero, pero bueno, <laughs> pero eh, todo lo que tiene que ver con... ¿Qué, qué, qué? Remoto, eso, remoto, <laughs> se me había olvidado. Eh, pero todo que tiene que ver con la presencia, con, con the embodied, eh, pues estar, estar en, pues, incorporado en el energía ahora que, que, pues sabemos que eso es lo que nos mueve, ¿no? <laughs> No hay de acuerdo, de acuerdo, no, pero pensando justo en esas realidades eh, y en esto que mencionan, eh, existe para las personas que viajan eh, la posibilidad de, de entonces tener unos tiempos eh, para acceder a trabajos con los que se puedan sustentar y solventar eh, mientras están estudiando. Tú, eh, en, desde, desde lo que tú conoces de nuestras realidades, es decir, una, una persona que se va... A, a estudiar la maestría, va a tener mm. unas unos posibilidades de, de tiempos para que vaya, trabaje, eh, pague sus transportes, sí. pague su alimentación bien tranquila es, y, y pueda continuar estudiando. Mira, tanto como en, en, en el pregrado como en la maestría, el horario es muy distinto que la Briana, no es de 7 a 7, es de 10 a cinco, pero no son todos los días, ni en pregrado, ni en maestría que están trabajando. El típico sería dos días de 10 a 5 y quizás un día de 10 a una, tanto en el pregrado como en la maestría. Um, entonces es bastante distinto a lo que los egresados de la carrera tienen como um, experiencia. E, y... y pues por decirlo así, no conozco ningún, ningún estudiante que no trabaja. Ninguno. <ríe> así que es, eso es como la, la parte de la vida estudiantil acá. Buenísimo, eso nos, eso nos amplía el panorama y además también nos permite ver posibilidades, ¿no? Posibilidades de, de acceder y sí. de aventurarnos a, a esa a esas dos maestrías tan interesantes y, e, e incluso hasta hasta pensar en el doctorado, me, me, luego creo que te voy a estar escribiendo, les voy a estar escribiendo ¿no? para, para curiosear un poco, un poco más sobre, sobre ello, no solo para mí, para colegas, para un gremio que está también eh, con la posibilidad de interactuar con ustedes de forma creativa y, y de, desde unas realidades que podemos enunciar poéticamente mm. también. Mm -hmm. Y... y... Pues yo creo que en la universidad en sí hay, hay posibilidades de trabajar, como lo dicen embajador, que me parece muy chistoso. Um, <ríe> es como los, um, ay Dios mío, se me ha olvidado allá, estudiantes que, que trabajan como dentro de la universidad, monitores. Eh, ¿Monitores con labor social? Con labor social, sí. sí. Pues, pues monitores en... en, en, en pues en la carrera, pero tanto también como, no se me ha olvidado, eh, inductores. Ok. Uf, se me llegó la palabra. Hay otra pregunta. ¿La experiencia laboral es muy importante para acceder a la maestría? Um, so there's a, there's a question here and it's a little, I think if I'm correct in thinking it's a little bit about, is it, I'll go frame it slightly differently, but uh, how important is um, professional experience to be able to access the masters? So I guess by professional experience, it's like, I think as a theater maker or a performer. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I think it makes a lot of sense to come onto an MA with some experience, but I don't think that we can stipulate that you have to have professional experience. So for instance, I'm really noticing the difference of people who've never been able to work in the theater, don't necessarily know what to ask the technicians. So it's good to have had some experience of working in theater, but you know, it's perfectly fine if that experience was mostly on a BA course, that's mm -hmm. a really good beginning, that's a good place to start. Um, just to give you an idea of what the current cohorts like, the current group, so I've got the range of someone who's come directly from a BA that literally just graduated and someone who's uh, beginning of her 30s that's had quite 
quite a lot of experience. So that's also quite nice sometimes on an MA that you have very experienced people and people that are just beginning. And there's different qualities that you have then as a, as a peer group when you have that kind of range of experience. And I see that happening quite a lot on MAs at UAL, that there's often mature practitioners as well as very young practitioners. So there's a bit of both. Um, solo rápidamente, creo que seguramente lo entendieron, pero, pero pues es, está favorecido si tienes alguna experiencia en, en laboral, pero, pero se cuenta en la experiencia del pregrado sobre todo en un pregrado que yo puedo decir como yo sé que estos estudiantes eh, gradúan con tan X experiencia trabajando en un teatro o trabajando alrededor del teatro o en, en el performance. Um, y luego Sofía está diciendo que, por ejemplo, ella tiene dentro de sus, sus eh, estudiantes, hay un estudiante que acabó de salir de su pregrado, entró en la maestría directamente y otro, otro estudiante que está acercando las 30 con, con años de, de experiencia y que eso está muy bello en sí. Eh, y creo que eso está también como una reflexión un poco de, de cómo están las maestrías en este momento. Eh, pues yo diría que en, en esta universidad, pero diría en, en, en el Reino Unido, que ahí hay como estudiantes jóvenes recién graduados de, 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 de pregrado y también otros que, que, que están pues en la mitad de su carrera. I am going to have to shoot in two minutes. Yo tengo que irme en dos minutos, así que si hay algunas preguntas más. We'll just say that on one quick point, perhaps, um, if, if another question doesn't come in. Maybe it's good mm. to also know that there's an expectation to be able to work independently. So we have some time where you're coming together and you have taught classes, but there's also this understanding that you'll be able to make work alone, either with your peers or maybe even with some of the other BA students possibly, but there is independent study time as part of your time here at Wimbledon. So mm. not to always be looking of like, what's the next thing you're going to tell me to do, but really yeah. come your desire initiation to be doing your own work. Absolutely. Eso es, eso es un punto muy importante para como el contexto de esta universidad y es la, la práctica la práctica independiente, el trabajo independiente, esperamos con nuestros estudiantes se pueden eh, trabajar solos eh, y independiente. Entonces muchas veces los horas de contacto con el maestro o la maestra eh, se, es, muy, es muy como los laboratorios, o sea, a, a, nuestro aprendizaje es como los laboratorios, dejamos con una guía y esperamos que los, los estudiantes trabajan. A very good uh, question from Sergio. So you can detect there that, that the spaces is um, an issue in all universities. <laughs> so um, the masters have like a studio for for them to work in. <laughs> uh, we we fought quite a lot uh, in, in the Havariana about spaces all the time and, and students not having spaces to work in. Um, it's not as, uh, no es tanto como la Javriana, tranquilos, hay más espacio acá. Y la maestría tiene como uno, una, un estudio que tiene la división similar a la división que tienen en, en los estudios de arriba. Uno y dos, ¿será? No, 7A, 7B. <laughs> Just saying that the studio is, is a bit like Studio 7A and 7B there, where it has a division. Okay. Any okay. last ones? En, en, honor a, en honor al tiempo y a, y a, y a tu generosidad, Kat, eh, pues sería agradecer, despedir. Eh, los, los datos de contacto siguen aquí, muy vigentes. Y, y pues si tenemos algunas dudas y si otras personas al comentarlo tienen dudas, eh, seguro que nos vamos a poder comunicar contigo directamente, Kat, o con, o con Sofía. Sería, sería ideal. Estoy dejando mi correo en el chat, así que cualquier pregunta que, que se quedó me pueden hacer y yo lo puedo pasar a Sofía. So I just leave my email and I can delegate to Sofía or to Micah in that. But it was absolutely amazing to see you guys. Eh, se los extraño mucho, 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 mucho. <laughs> <laughs> y la comida sobre todo y la salsa. <laughs> bueno, ya sabiendo te vamos a, a visitar. Y también te extrañamos mucho. Muchas gracias, Kat. Muchas gracias, Sofía. Muchas gracias. Muchas Thank gracias you. a ustedes. Muchas gracias, Sofía, Maika. Uh, que estén muy bien. Seguimos en contacto, Thank por you. favor. Gracias.
todos. Por supuesto. Thanks, everyone. Gracias. Bye. Hasta luego.